guys, welcome back to the Dash of Lawn. Today I'm going to show you how I make roads, fields, and forest floors. Now, it's not difficult. People that know me know that I like to make things quickly and efficiently and, and have the results really look great, fantastic. And all you really need is some glue, some cloth, whether it's felt or just straight up cloth, various paints and earth shades of green and brown, various flocking materials, and I'll get into that in the video and show you how I make this terrain. So let's jump right into the video and see how it's done. Here, let's take a look at some of the things you're going to be using uh, that you'll need to put together your roads and your woods and your fields. Uh, first of all, you got to have cloth. As you can see, there are various shades of brown uh, cut to shape. Uh, if you're going to do a woods or if you're going to do a field uh, or roads, make sure you cut them the right size and dimensions that are appropriate for your gaming. Uh, in this case, my roads are about three inches wide. Uh, besides the cloth, you're going to need some grit, uh, flocking material. In this case, I do actually have some crushed up bark from the woods, as well as spent coffee grinds, uh, as well as some actual grit. Some green flock as well will be very useful. Uh, in addition, you'll need some sponges like you get with blister packs of miniatures, uh, such as those from Battlefront. I uh, cut them up into little squares. You're going to use them to actually apply the paint on the cloth. I'll show you how that's done later. And various colors and shades of uh, greens and browns you'll be using to highlight and texture up your pieces. Uh, you'll also need some white glue and you'll be watering that down typically. And you can also use for your flocking materials some dried up herbs like Italian seasoning, dill weed if you can put up with the smell, uh, oregano, that sort of thing. They do look the part once you put them down. You'll also need a black marker, either a permanent or even a fabric pen. All will do the trick. And once you've cut your pieces out to shape the proper widths and lengths that you want, you're going to start using your pen, your black pen, your black ink, to actually draw on the actual road marks. That's the, the black indentations uh, where the wheels and vehicles have traveled over the road. We start with that. And it should look a little bit like this. You're going to use your sponge and you're going to use various shades of paint, working your way up to lighter shades of brown and even an off-white like I did here uh, to kind of blend those black marker lines into the piece, as well as give the whole piece a sort of 3D feel to it. So you get a nice earthy look to your roads. Once you've finished applying the paint with your sponges, it's time to apply some actual flocking to your roads. Uh, this is where they really come alive. Uh, first thing you want to do is you want to water your white glue down, like half and half, thereabouts, and you want to apply it. Uh, as you can see in this picture, the green areas is where I applied the glue. So you don't want to apply long stretches of, of the glue all at once. You want to kind of do it in little little spots here and there, stretched out as much as you can because that way you will avoid getting warping or some stiffening of the cloth and it won't lay right. So just put it in spots like I have on here and then start applying your flocking material. Now you can use a green flock like I did here or you could use other flocking that would be appropriate for your table uh, such as just grit or sand or uh, even the oregano or crushed bark. Uh, whatever you think is appropriate for your roads. You can put them in the middle, uh, in between the meat wheel areas. You can put them on the outside, which is what I prefer, uh, and it's going to look great. Uh, just remember, don't apply it all along the perimeter of the roads. Keep them in little spots like I have here. Now, once you've sprinkled that first layer of flock, uh, you might want to take your uh, paint tubs or anything that will roll for you and uh, kind of press that first layer of flock into the glue. It kind of spreads it out a little bit and it looks a lot better. Uh, you'll sprinkle over top of that a second or even third time uh, to make sure that it gets fully flocked in those areas you want the flock to be. So that's what this is right here. I'm actually pressing in that first layer of flock. Of course, you only need to do this maybe on the first layer, the second and third layers of flock. You wouldn't want to press in or look too flat when, once the product is finished. So you kind of want to just do this on the first layer, uh, roll it out a little bit, and it should be fine. This is what it should look like once it's all flocked and you got all the, the texturing with the paint done. Uh, as you can notice here, you can see how I've used the paint to kind of hide the, the black ink from the permanent markers. You kind of want to do that again. You want to kind of fade 
uh, and blend in with the paint so it doesn't look so, uh, it doesn't contrast as much with the other colors around. It looks more worn and natural. So this is what it looks like when it's all flocked and painted. The forest floors are pretty much made the same way you do your roads. Uh, in this case, you can see where I used various shades of green and brown paint uh, splotched on and spread around. Again, we're using that sponge technique to kind of dry brush it onto the fabric. Uh, it really adds that 3D feel. But what really does the trick is when you texture it with your flocks, like I've done here with various shades of green and uh, some dried herbs. Uh, which work great, incidentally, because you do get a lot of herbs that have stick shapes in them, little sticks, and it looks very appropriate for a forest floor. And again, you'll be using your uh, pressing technique with your first layer and then uh, shoot on your second and maybe third layers on top of that. And it really looks the part once it's all said and done. Once you add all that dead fall and models, uh, like little stones and twigs from the backyard, and of course your trees, your model trees, it really looks good when it's laid out on the table. Fields are pretty much the same way, pretty straightforward, same techniques. Uh, your black lines with your marker will probably be a little bit more pronounced, like you can see here. It gives it that depth appearance and makes it look like a plowed field. Uh, as well as the strands of green flock. You can see there, it looks like there's actual uh, growth going on in there. And I also made use of clump flock. Not, not too much, just here and there, because the most, probably the most important thing to remember with the fields is don't overdo the glue, because you will get that problem where it's too rigid or it won't set right on your table, so on and so forth. Just be aware of that. Uh, this is pretty much how I did mine, and it works great. So there you go, folks. That's how I make my forest floors, my fields, and, of course, my roads. Uh, the finished product, you can't beat it. It's quick. It's, it's easy to make. It's not expensive. One of the strong points of using cloth is that you can have the roads and the fields and the forests actually shape themselves to your layout. Like if you have hills on the tabletop, you can have that forest uh, roll over that hill. Uh, you can have basically a forested hill that way uh, without sculpting a separate piece of terrain to look that part. It looks great. You can't beat it. Uh, the 3D effect of putting the flock on there and the, the gradual building up of the colors of paint, uh, like you go from the darker brown up all the way up through a lighter brown on your forest floors, for instance, it really does the part and makes it look 3D. I mean, compared to store-bought or manufacturer-bought pieces of terrain, you can't beat it. I mean, it's easy. You can make these in a couple hours, and the next day they're dried up and they're ready to go. So there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that gives you guys at least some idea how you can make your own terrain pieces that look fantastic and are versatile. If you have any questions, Leave them below in the comments. PM me, like, share, subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed. And as always, folks, hang in there. It's only going to get better.